Hello, Nauru. I'm Meredith Blackwell, and I am going to talk to you about your career in mycology. We are at the International Mycological Congress in <clears throat> Maastricht, Netherlands, and it's August the 12th, 2024, and um, it's all yours. You tell us where you were born in the city and um, something about how you grew up and your family and all. and how you got into mycology, and then we'll talk about your research. So thank you, thank you very much, Benedict. Um, so I'm from Benin. Benin is a free small country in West Africa. I'm born on January 24th, 1974, somewhere in a very small uh, forest village called uh, Tompago in northwestern part of Benin. Mm. So I grew up within a family with a Mycophagical tradition, we used to eat uh, mushrooms. We collect wild in the wild, in forests, in farms. So I grew up with this behavior of mushroom consumptions. So later on, uh, I, studied my, I studied at the University of Abu Mikalavi, uh, agriculture. I, studied, I am agronomist by formation, but at the end of my training, I have to select one topic on which I have to defend my master thesis. So uh, at this time, I remember my university welcomed a team of mycologists coming from the National Botanical Garden of Belgium. Mm -hmm. So they came to Benin within the scope of a collaboration project and they started making a national wide prospections about fungal diversity. And as I was at the end of my training, they embarked me within this team, we made the trip all together. And this is how I was fascinated about fungal diversity. And it's like I have been infected by mycology and my mycological story yeah. dates back to, to this time. So some of the Belgian mycologists, what, who were they? It was uh, uh, Professor Ramelo, yes. Jan Ramelo the former uh, director of the botanical right. garden. He is a mycologist having worked mostly on myxomycetes. Then uh, there were also Andre de Kezel. At this time, he was also at the beginning of his career because he told me that he has just completed his PhD by the time they came to Benin. Uh, there were also uh, um, a Czech mycologist called Vladimir Antonin working on marasmioid fungi. Okay. So. Yeah, Professor Romulo, I, I actually knew um, and visited the garden at that yeah. time when he was the director. Yeah, yeah, very interesting then. Yeah. So you changed fields to, to become? Yes, from agronomist, uh -huh. I turned to be a mycologist. Yes. It was not easy because at this time there were no mycologists in Benin and uh, uh, I faced troubles and uh, difficulties to find a coach, to find a supervisor who can support me in mm -hmm. my mycological way. Uh, this is how uh, I firstly started with Belgian, but after I got my master, my master thesis was about monitoring and uh, natural production assessments of wild edible mushrooms. But later on, I studied my PhD in Germany at the University of uh, Munich, Ludwig Maximilian University, under uh, the supervision of Professor Agre. Mm. Professor Agre, who worked a lot on uh, ectomycorrhizal fungi and uh, a, a anatomical aspect of ectomycorrhizae and, uh, and so on. Yeah. So, yeah, and so in Benin, uh, you are looking at diversity of the Mycorrhizae? Yes, um, my main focus in Benin is about uh, biodiversity, of course, and uh, assessing natural productions of wild ectomycorrhizal fungi. Mm -hmm. And the background idea was to support local communities, to establish local economic sector, to sustain the livelihood of villages, of forest uh, population, forest villages, mm -hmm. to support also uh, uh, to to face gender inequalities uh, regarding the access uh, to, to natural, to, to forest resources. Yeah. So at the beginning, we're, es we're thinking to establishing a value chain on edible mushrooms. But later on, 
uh, I included in my research focus uh, aspect of ecology, of distribution, but also on conservation. And my topic during this uh, uh, symposium, during this Congress, will be about fungal conservation in tropical Africa. Okay. And you have a lot of the genera of, of mushrooms that are common all over the world, right? Yes. Oh. Yes, um, my PhD topic is about tomantella, mm -hmm. tomantella and tomantoloid fungi, systematic ecology and evolution. But in fact, uh, within my research group, I, I am a research group leader in tropical mycology where we investigate mostly on Amanita, on Ainocibe, uh, Bolich, but also uh, since five years on Polyporales, water inhabiting fungi mostly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I've, I've done some collecting of polypores and tomentella and all with um, Bob Gilbertson, who worked with Rivard. And, uh, yes, uh, we, <coughs> work, we work a bit with Rivard and uh, yeah. my postdoc, uh, Dr. Boris Olu, who is working on polyporales. He, he's doing it in collaboration with, with Rivard. Yeah. And uh, tomentella, I started working with uh, Professor Urmas Kolyalk. He coached me at this time between 22, 25. I work intensively with him. I visited him many times in Tartu. And uh, uh, Dr. Amanita, we are collaborating with, uh, uh, with uh, Prof. Tsuli Yang from Kuming Institute. And also uh, our focus, I mean, uh, our collaboration also is directed to the University of Frankfurt with Prof. Pippenbring, okay. with whom we are collaborating since already 10 years. Uh, making training courses, summer schools in Benin, but also international congresses. We either organized the first international symposium on tropical African mycology that was held uh, in 2019 at the University of Paraku. Yeah. Now, when you were in Tartu, did you meet uh, Parmasto Erast? Parmasto Erast, um, <coughs> I, didn't, I didn't work with him, but, but, but I met him twice yeah, yeah. as I visited uh, uh, Prof. Urmas Koliak Lab in 20, 20, I think 25, yeah, 2005. 2005, I visited the lab of Prof. Koliak, Koliak Urmas mm -hmm. at, uh, at Tartu University, and there I met uh, Prof. Parmasto. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was older than you, yeah. much older than you, yeah. but I was just wondering, mm. he was always a favorite of mine. Yeah. <laughs> he had wonderful stories about working yeah. um, in Tartu for many years. Mm. But, um, okay, so uh, has, has Kathy Aim ever been to Benin? Do you know Kathy? Oh, she works with breast fungi, and I was just wondering because uh, she Kathy works. Amy, mm, she was never yeah. been in Benin, okay. but I have uh, one of my my doc my PhD student. She's a lady. Uh, uh, we are supervising her together with Professor Pippenbrink, uh -huh. and uh, she published a paper with uh, with uh, with Prof. Amy Kachi. Yeah. Okay, was Working it on, on rust fungi? Rust fungi, yes. Yeah, because I know, um, well, Kathy was a colleague of mine for a long time, and, yeah. uh, and I know that she was working. We never met. I, I never oh, meet her. she's here. She's here. We'll, we'll okay, have to, I'm happy yeah, to meet we'll her. We'll find and, and introduce you I would to her. I would be happy to meet yeah, her. Yeah, because um, she was here yesterday. I, I don't know, maybe she's not being here long, but oh, yeah. they've been collecting rust fungi in, uh, Bene I mean, in Sardinia ah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and some other places in yeah. Europe. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a small world. Mycology, Mycology is, is incredible how many people we used to read in literature and suddenly you meet them here. It's yeah. a, a wonderful thing. And we're and, all uh, friends. It, can, it turned to be that everybody knows everyone. It's I know, incredible. I know. It, it's yeah. just a big network, as yeah, we say. Yeah, it's a very or, nice networking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, um, no, Africa's a place I've never been. Uh, I, I once wrote a proposal and planned to go to South Africa, but I, I needed a, a lab to work in, and I knew someone there. But you are I changed absolutely it. welcome in Benin. <laughs> well, uh, we've been working uh, currently, to be honest and to be modest, I think we are doing wonderful work in Benin. My lab is Tropical Mycology and uh, Plant Fungi Interaction. And... Uh, uh, I can say we have basic facilities to welcome any mycologists willing to sample or willing to yeah. make a mycological stay in, in tropical Africa. Just yeah. start with Benin and you'll discover the wonder of tropical fungi, tropical African fungi. Well, you know, I'm, I'm interested mostly now in insects associated with fungi, but I, I was going to ask you, do you have the, the termite 
mushrooms that they cook? mushroom, we have enough, and uh, just recently for two weeks, uh, I have a paper published together with uh, one colleague from Congo Republic, where we made a checklist of termite fungi occurring in both mm -hmm. countries, in Benin and in uh, in uh, in Congo. And and, and uh, so people go out and collect them. To collect eat. them. People are going yeah. in the field, collecting them. It's uh, termite fungi is seen. They are, they, are, they have. I mean, they are seen as a treasure for local people. Mm -hmm. Local people treasure them very well. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 what about do you do you have the zilarias that sometimes grow? Yes, zilaria. Mm -hmm. Are they? Um, do they have sclerotia? Are the kinds with sclerotia that live in the termite nest or not? Yes. Uh, okay. After I, I mean, on fossil termites, mm -hmm. on fossil termite mount, uh, zilaria may appear. They, 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 they may occur, but okay. when termites have left the termite mound. Uh, okay. I mean, in old, on older termites mound, it may happen that we sample xylaria species. Well, I would love to see some of those termites sometimes because I've been interested in ectoparasites, yeah, yeah, termites, yeah. Uh, yeah. fungal ectoparasites, mm. not necessarily the mushrooms. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, is there anyone working on insect fungi? Insect fungi. Uh, I mean, yes, uh, I know a colleague. In my research group, not yet, but I know a colleague working from Ivory Coast, Côte d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. uh, she's working on uh, ecology and uh, and phenology of, of termite fungi. Yeah. But she's working in collaboration with uh, Professor uh, Mikhail Poulsen from, from the University of Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. And then we have been collaborating with Dekezel working on not, not termite fungi, but on ectoparasites. The labulbenials on, okay, on, yeah. on beetles and uh, and, uh, and, and hydronoptera and so on. I've worked on those some and they're ah, very yeah, yeah. interesting and, and yeah. uh, hmm. so a lot of collections need to be done on those fungi yeah. hmm. everywhere, especially everywhere. Africa. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Has yeah. Um, a man named Rossi from Italy, he, he's collected all over the all over Africa and ah, I yeah. just wondered if he'd ever been to Benin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um he was an old colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So there's so much to do. So much to do. There are yeah. many things to do with fungi. It's incredibly diverse, and uh, the work is also huge to do. And uh, I, I have a Venezuelan student who's here now for this meeting. But when he was in graduate school working on his PhD, he was working on the salad beetles and the fungi in their gut. The, yeah, in guts. The yeast. Yeah. yeah. And we never could get any of the pasalid beetles from Africa because yeah. that was the only group he didn't have. And so we might send Hector there. Anyway, I will leave my contacts. Anytime yeah. you need co you need collaboration, you need to contact in tropical Africa. Yeah. Just contact that would be me, great. and my lab is available. For, is we yeah. welcome any kind of collaboration as far as it's focus on fungi. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've retired and uh, don't get much chance to do bench work anymore, but yeah. you know, it's, it's fun to look through bunches of insects yeah. looking for these. The question is, uh, can someone be retired from fungi? <laughs> Not If too you much. are infected, it's for life. <laughs> we'll be working on fungi right. until death. So. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. yeah, we were talking about there. There are not many mycologists who just retire and walk away. Yes. But yeah. there are a few, and, and we're puzzled by that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's, is there anything else you want to talk about, African mycology? Or? Yes. Um, the question is uh, the, the tradition and heritage, mycological heritage in tropical African context is disappearing mm -hmm. because uh, not many people are working and the mycophagy itself is decreasing because uh, in, in Africa we are experiencing a kind of exodus from villages to, to cities, to large cities. People are always migrating mm -hmm. from forest villages to establish in large cities. And in this way, they are losing traditional way of feeding. Uh, we used to, to sample uh, foods in the forest, but nowadays it's not the mm -hmm. same. People are familiar, young people are familiar with foodstuffs, imported, manufactured foodstuff, instead of relying on forest food resources. Mm -hmm. This is fact, and along with the traditional knowledge around fungal resources are also disappearing. And uh, we are making awareness promotion 
uh, in a way that people need to come back again to their ancestral feeding tradition and uh, trying to record uh, some information uh, because until now, uh, mycological information are transmitted orally from one generation to another. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's time to record them either through radios uh, or even through books. And we recently published a book on edible mushrooms of West Africa. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy here, but I can write you uh, the yeah. link where you can download yeah. it. And it's very nice where in this book we recorded over 160 edible species from West Africa uh, with very nice dis illustration, details, descriptions of about 60. And uh, all we have also recorded all knowledge uh, going uh, with uh, with uh, the uses of fungi in tropical so, Africa. So they're with traditional foods. All people probably that still do this go out and collect the fungi. Yes, they sell yes. them poisoned because yes. they know the fungi. They know. Well. They know. Uh, it's it's a. There are some ethnic groups who have deep knowledge on mushrooms mm -hmm. uh, uses and mushroom sampling, collecting, and so on. In Central Benin, for example, the Nago people are the best. Who, who knows quite well, the, the ladies, the rural women, are able to distinguish ideal species from toxic one mm -hmm. in a such way that it can even challenge modern taxonomy. Mm. It's incredible. And what about traditional medicines? Do you have any of those? Yes, but on? not as common as the food as foods mm -hmm. yeah only few species have been used or are you are, are being used in traditional way but in terms of uh, fungal use as food i think uh, it's more than 60 or, or 70 for benin mm -hmm. but at the same time i can record only about 20 species that are commonly used as uh, medicine uh, for for therapeutic purpose well, I envy that because of all the fungi in the world, the ones I know the least about are Basidiomyces. I, I can't identify mushrooms, <laughs> or at least I'm scared to. Yeah. Um, I would never tell anybody. Yeah, no, you no, people, eat local people can. They yeah. do it, quite, uh, I can say, excellently because they have their own criteria, uh, their own way, uh, their yeah. own classification system, and even their own local nomenclature how to distinguish, how to name, how to, how to make a discrimination between closely related uh, taxa. It's incredible. It's a matter of habit. They use it from uh, since immemorial time. Yeah. And uh, they acquired from their parents. And later on, they will transmit it to their offspring. But as I told it is disappearing. Because uh, young people are eager to learn more about globalization, about uh, any kind of modernism. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. I would like them to identify my fungi for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. anyway, it's been very nice to talk to you. If you've got anything more you want to add? Uh, uh, what can I add is that, uh, as I told you, I will present uh, during this Congress, I will not talk about taxonomy, I will not talk about uh -huh. evolution, not okay. even about uh, uh, systematics or any topics, because something alarming I will be talking, it's uh, about the uh, fungal conservation, especially in tropical Africa, because mm -hmm. the forest, the fungi rich forest are disappearing at an alarming rate. And if no, nothing is done, uh, the whole fungal diversity, along with the traditional heritage, will disappear. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a kind of a alarming communication event to, 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 to deliver during this Congress and say that fungi need protection. You, you probably know Greg Mueller? I met him yeah. already. We yeah. are on the same board and we, will, uh, mm -hmm. we are all co-author of this uh, communication. Yeah. And uh, we all we are all member of the UCN Fungal uh, Specialist Group. Yeah. I know him quite well, and, yeah, uh, and we used to communicate and uh, discuss about how yeah. to move forward, how to move through things forward regarding fungal conservation. Yeah, he's one of the few people I know in our country that that is interested in this. Um, there are others, but yeah, there are, there are many, many, many of them are attending yeah. this congress. Uh, yeah. Craig Muller, Katia Katero. 
uh, Norway is not attending here, but really very active in terms of fungal conservation is Dr. David Minter from from Kabi International. Uh, it is in the UK. So there are many uh, a handful uh, experts on fungal conservation that are attending yeah. this meeting. Yeah, the one thing about doing interviews is that you don't get to go hear all the papers. <laughs> And so I, I, I haven't really looked at the program because I didn't want to be tempted yeah. because I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah. So, so anyway, you'll be on YouTube. And, Thank uh, you. And people will be able to see your interview in a few weeks. Yeah, I trust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I and, hope uh, they can understand my English. <laughs> oh, your English is fine. Your English is very good. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's an honor, uh, an honor for me <laughs> to be interviewed and... Uh, a great honor to Lottery have met flowers. you. Lottery Thank you very flowers. much. <laughs> yeah. <Thanks. laughs>